my husband and I were in Hawaii with our youngest son, Luke. We were scheduled to um, come home that day uh, from a trip. We had been on a business, I'd been on a business trip with him. So on 9-11, we got up super early and we went to the top of a volcano in Hawaii called Haleakala. Very popular with the tourists. It's supposed to be the first place to see the sunrise over Hawaii. So we got up at like three in the morning um, to drive to the top of the mountain and watch this beautiful sunrise. And lots and lots of people were there. We were, um, you know, listening. I was carrying our baby. He was just a couple weeks, a couple months old. And um, we couldn't figure out people were talking about, you know, flying into um, buildings and all these crazy things. And Mr. Dobson and I couldn't figure out what could they possibly be talking about? Like must be some new movie or something going on. Um, so we enjoyed the sunrise and kind of a peaceful time together. And we got uh, back in the car, turned the radio on. And lo and behold, we heard about the um, airplanes flying into the Twin Towers and the Pentagon. And they didn't know about the... Um, you know, there wasn't anything really talked about with the um, plane in Pennsylvania yet, but um, we couldn't, you know, we just couldn't believe it. We were overwhelmed. Um, we stopped because this was, we stopped at a ranger station on the way down the mountain um, so I could call my parents because we did not have cell phones then. And my parents were frantic when we talked to them. They weren't sure what time our flight was. So for all they knew, we were flying at the time. Um, so they were so happy to hear from us. And um, we ended up um, staying in Hawaii for, a, I think it was four or five extra days, which sounds glamorous, but unfortunately there's no other way to get home other than to fly unless we're gonna start paddling a boat. So um, it was really unnerving flying home. Um, we were scared the whole time. The flight was packed with a lot of nervous people. So, um, but we did make it home. We made it home safely. And um, at that time we lived outside of Washington, DC. So driving by the Pentagon and seeing, you know, the tragedy that took place there and the visible evidence of what happened um, was just, it's heartbreaking. So um, it was definitely a, a day that will always be remembered in my life. When I think back to September 11th, 2001, my sixth graders, I was teaching sixth grade, had just done some projects in the library the few weeks before. And so we were doing presentations. And there was a knock on my door and a colleague of mine who was in another grade level, who had planning at the time, came and said, there's been a terrible accident and a plane has struck the um, one of the Twin Towers in New York. And I thought that was horrible. I thought, what a freak accident. Then I got back to my classroom because the students were doing presentations. We were sent out an email to kind of be told what was happening. Uh, the principal said that at a certain time, we'd all tell the students that we had. That way, at one time, all the students in the school would find out. So, you know, you wouldn't find out in one class that then someone else would tell someone else when they went to the bathroom or the water fountain. Parents were, of course, coming to get their kids just because they wanted them to be close to them on such a traumatic day. We didn't know much of what was going on. Uh, we told them what we knew. Afterwards, most entertainment just kind of stopped. All the, the TV stations and radio stations were, were covering news, and it was on throughout the night. I remember that. And it was just numbing. I couldn't believe this happened to our country. I go back to work the next day, and it's then I realized that I had a personal little connection to it. That summer, the summer of 2001, I had started a program through National Geographic. They uh, were helping teachers as we were uh, on the process of getting national board certifications. They brought in teachers from across the nation into a workshop. There was a man by the name of Joe Ferguson, and he wanted to impact learning and help teachers and then, of course, help the students. And so I got a chance to, you know, be there with the other teachers and Joe, and we were looking forward to coming back halfway through the school year with our uh, materials to look at our videos and things we were going to submit for our certification. And I received word from one of the other leaders in our group that um, National Geographic 
had a group of sixth graders from the Washington, D.C. schools who were going to go on a trip to the Washington state area around Puget Sound, and they were going on a field trip. And, and Joe was one of two people that was taking them. And all those students, along with Joe and Ann, the other person's name was Ann, they'd been on the plane that left the um, Reagan National and crashed into the Pentagon. And so suddenly I knew someone who had been involved in this. Originally, it was just some kind of national tragedy that we all kind of felt, but suddenly I knew someone. In the days and weeks that would come out, um, I learned more things about Joe. And one of the things I learned about him was his favorite candy was Reese's peanut butter cups. So one of the things I try to do every year on 9-11 is have at least one of those Reese's peanut butter cups for Joe in salute to him. 